This video is going to demonstrate using the range and cell cells keywords in, uh, in Visual Basic to actually access areas on your spreadsheet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at some code here and uh, to kind of talk about it. So I've just declared a variable here called long and I'm going to do something a little bit fun here right at the beginning. I'm using the application object and the application object has a worksheet function object. And the worksheet function object has many, not all, but most of the worksheet functions that are available in Microsoft Excel. So in this case, I'm using the worksheet function ran between. Uh, and it's just basically saying, give me a random number between 1 and 100. The arguments to ran between are a low number and a high number. So we got some random number in this variable right here after that runs. So the next thing we see here is we see the use of cells again to store values to a worksheet. You'll notice in this case I'm using cells.value. The dot value attribute of a cells object is the default attribute or default property of a cells object. And so you'll notice in my line below here when I assign number to cells33 I didn't use it because it's the default. If you leave off any dot property on a cells object it essentially means you're talking about the value property of that particular cell. Here's an example of actually accessing the font object and of a cell and of that font object I want to access its bold property and I set its bold property to true. Now the next line down again just grabs another random number using the same worksheet function dot ran between that I did up above so I now have a new random number probably I hope I do, but you know, could have gotten lucky. And these next lines show how to access a range of cells. And so let me just talk about that for just a minute. This looks pretty complicated, but it's actually not. Typically, when you ask for a range of cells in Excel, you need to give the starting cell and the ending cell, usually separated by a colon. Well, essentially, that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm giving a starting cell, row 3, column 1, and the ending cell, row 5, column 2. So that's a range of cells, and I'm storing that number into that range of cells. And it will actually store it into every cell in that range. And so if you think about that, that's row 3, 4, and 5, columns 1 and 2. So that's actually six total cells. And I'm doing a very similar thing here with that entire range I'm saying get the font object on that range and get the bold attribute and assign true to that so it should change all of those cells to bold now here's an example of changing a cell so that it's not bold we assign the false value to the bold attributes that essentially turns the bold property off now this next line does something a little bit more uh, interesting, uh, well these next two lines of code. So here I am referring to a range of cells from row 6 to row 8, column 1 to column 3, and I use my application worksheet function to grab a random number between 1 and 100. And what that will do is we'll get that random number and then it assigns it to every cell in that range. So in essence every cell in that range ought to have the same number. Let's take a look at this next one though, it's very different. This next one is assigning to that same range of cells a string. Notice the quoted string, but in that quoted string essentially I have a formula. It starts with the equal sign, of course, because all formulas have to start with the equal sign. And that formula uses the spreadsheet function ran between. And so what happens is it puts that formula in the cell and then it evaluates the formula and generates a random number. So doing it this way we should actually get a different random number in every cell unless we just get lucky of course and roll the same number. I'm going to hit the F8 key which is the debug and uh, step through this program so let's see what happens when we step through this program. So now I'm just saying store a number, a random number into that variable and I can pause and so I got a 66. So then I'm going to assign that value to my sheet so I should have a 66 in cell 11 and indeed I do. Let's go ahead and step on down here. And in cell 33, I should have a 66. Whoops, it's hidden. So let's go ahead and move this little box here out of the way. And I got to move a little further. <laughs> and there's a 66 in cell 33. 
and uh, let's go on and hit the next one and now I should have made the cell in 1-1 one, one bold let's take a look at that and indeed it's bold alright that's cool now let's go on down now we're going to execute this statement that should put a 66 oh wait a minute it's not 66 probably anymore because we just did another we just did another ran between so it's 12 now so we should put the 12 in all those cells let's execute that and see if we get a 12 in all those cells and indeed we did get the 12 in all those cells let's go back and now we're gonna set bold on all those cells so execute that statement and indeed we got bold on all those cells Let's go on down and see what this one does. This is going to set the random value. We don't know what it's going to be from 1 to 100, but we're thinking it will be the same in every cell in this range from row 6 to row 8. Let's execute that. Go look at row 6 to row 8, and we got the same value in every cell. That's what we thought. Now let's go back and take a look at this one. This one's going to actually assign the ran between formula to every cell. So let's execute that one and take a look at what we got. And indeed, notice in every cell is a ran between formula and it generated a random number, and every cell is essentially different in this case. Okay, let's take a look at a little bit more code. Now, in this case, I want you to notice that I'm using something very different for range here to refer to a single cell. I'm just saying range A1, but notice it's in quotes, and that's something that a lot of people kind of actually like to see and that should put a 10 in cell A1 so I'm actually going to start executing this statement right this uh, subroutine right here so I'm going to go ahead and hit reset and then I'm going to hit F8 and I'm going to sit on that and then I'm going to execute that line so in A1 I should now have a 10 let's go take a look and indeed I do have a 10 there and this next line is going to basically say take what's in cell A1 and add to it what's in cell A1 so 10 plus 10 of course is 20 and put that in A2 so let's execute that line and see what it does. And indeed, there's A2, and it's got a 20 in it, just like we thought. Now, I want, to, I want you to notice, this is using the cells approach to refer to cell A1. And this code is going to do exactly the same thing, so I'm not even going to actually show you what it does, but it will put a 10 in cell A1, and then it says cells 1, 1, plus cells 1, 1, which would be 20, and store that into cells one comma two oops it's not exactly the same because there notice cells one comma two is row one column two let's actually execute that one and go take a look and indeed there's the 20 in that cell so pay close attention to what's going on in your code because when we use cells we're actually referring to row comma column it's hard to remember but you just have to beat it into yourself so let's take a look at this next one. This next line basically says take this range of cells A1 through C3 and put a 5 in that range of cells. Let's see what happens. So we'll go take a look at that. A1 through C3. There's a 5. Oops, all the way over to here. There's a 5 in that entire range of cells. Just what we thought. Now let's go back and look at the next line, the last line here. Now this next line is going to do exactly the same thing. Notice what it says. It says range, but then it says go from the cell in location 1, 1 and all the way through the cells in location 3, 3. So that's a range of cells essentially from A1 to C3. Now I'm going to say right here is going to kind of frustrate some of you. This approach where we say cells 1, 1 is the approach we're going to use we're not going to use this technique here. We're not going to use that syntax. When we want to refer to one cell, we're always going to say cells 1, 1. And the same story. We're not going to use this approach where we say a range A1 colon A3 in a string here. We're always going to use the approach down here where we say beginning cell, comma, ending cell in the range. So look hard at these things and memorize these things. It's not a bad idea to write in some of this code and try it out because this is exactly what we're going to do a lot of and you really need to understand what's going on here. Thank you.